All right, I got Dr. Martoni on the show. He is chiropractor and founder of the Neck Nest. Welcome to the show, brother. Hey, man, thanks. I, uh, I loved our pregame that we had before the call. This is going to be fun. Yeah, I'm excited, man. So you, I've been following you for the last couple of years. You're, you, you, you're a chiropractor, and you're also the creator of this really interesting uh, pillow called the Neck Nest that I have yeah. and I've had for about the last two years. Anybody that sees this pillow though, Dr. Marshall, they're gonna be like, oh my God, this is a bunch of just baloney, yeah. something that they see at 3 a.m. You know, on some infomercial. I gotta be honest, like, how'd you come up with this and, and why, and why is it not those things? Well, I mean, it, I think that you, you actually answered your own question. The, when you have a product, I don't care if it's a neck nest, a regular pillow, a towel, a shoe, if the why is not big enough, the what will, if the why is big enough, the what doesn't matter. The neck nest, it was designed as a how to serve a purpose to be able to change. You see, when I, I was a side sleeper my entire life until I herniated a disc in my lower back. I had back pain and I just attributed it always to, you know, mountain biking, being a competitive sports athlete. I'm always hunched over adjusting patients. At this Dr. time, Tony, you're a chiropractor. How could you have back pain, right? Like this right, is your that, field, right? Right. And this is the myth, right? Because you think, you know, chiropractic is for pain, you know, neck pain, back pain, go to a chiropractor for that. I practice so much different. It, it, it isn't about pain. It's about neurology. You see what you tell me when you come in, to, let's say you're a new patient, you come in, you sense this world through your, you, you perceive this world through your senses. So reality that occurs in your life is happening through your senses, then it's being interpreted in your brain, and then you're telling me what's going on. So what the individual tells me is a distorted perception of reality. So I have to listen to what they see, but be able to treat what they, I mean, sorry, listen to what they say, but I treat what I see. Reality lies within neurology. And I've gained a great understanding of, I'm a, I'm a kinesiologist and an exercise physiologist, and I love the study of biomechanics and how the biomechanics moved. I have, had eventually herniated my disc from a, a mountain biking injury, and I'm like, how could it get to this? And because of my patterns that I understand and having that ADD brain, I'm like, I know that something's going on. So I reviewed 3,000 x-rays, and I saw that due to how the body adapts, and we had talked about it through psoas major muscle adaptation to forward head posture, I'm like, holy mackerel, this is happening at night when I'm sleeping because I'm a side sleeper. I love sleeping in a ball and being all curled up. And I'm like, listen, if I have, if the, the rest of my practice relies on, on for, based on what I found, how I sleep, I don't care what it takes, I am going to sleep on my back. I slept, then I started creating different things and using pillows and rolling up towels and, and coming up with all of these ways to be able to become a back sleeper. So then fast forward down the road, then we developed the neck nest, which is just a product designed to put your neck in a very specific position to be able to get change. But you will not do it if your why isn't big enough. Does that make a difference? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. Just so it's really interesting. So for you, the whole it was your own injury. You know, it's funny. Here you are, a back specialist. Like you get this stuff. You understand the body at a high, high level. But yet you still couldn't get better. And then it was just that understanding of like, hey, if I can change the way I sleep, maybe, maybe I'll create some change. And that's what you saw in your own life. All right, you there? Yeah, sorry, you, you broke up a little bit there. You got can, me? Can you can you hear me, Doctor Martoni? I can. Okay. And you, yeah, and, and you're correct. So you have to understand the body has laws of adaptation. It adapts very specifically. And the way that I explain it to my patients is your spine is like clay. It's moldable. And your spine and the way that your structure is and how you hold yourself is a direct result to your daily rituals. So if you're going to be on a computer all day long, you're going to be texting all day long, and you're going to be curled up in a ball sleeping, you're going to have very specific patterns that are going to show up very in very specific ways. So I see tens of thousands of different people. Now I, I coach people you know, across the globe. 
I can look at you without you even telling me anything and tell you what's going on internal. I've developed this. It's called neural structural protocol. It's being able to read neurology, re be able to read, ask you a few questions, and then I can tell you what's going on before you can even perceive that you even think it's a problem. And, and that is where the true understanding of how, you know, why sleeping is so important to be able to take the advantage of the eight hours that you spend in bed to restructure that spine so that you improve your overall functional health and well-being. Yeah, it makes total sense. I heard you on a podcast about a couple of years ago, and this is what made me dive all into the neck nest because I heard you on a podcast, I think it was Dave Asprey, and you were talking about the psoas. And I have... I have so as issues. I know I do. I have hip issues from being a former police officer for 15 years, sitting in a car in a hunched over position. And that led to so as in my right so as. And you said something about it that that made me go, I can I can get on board with that. And it makes complete sense. If I'm spending eight hours in a certain position, the body is just going to adapt that way. And so I thought, what the heck? I'm gonna try the I'm gonna try the neck nest out and see and see what happens. And I got great. I felt better. My spine felt better. Adapting to being on the sleeping on my back that was somewhat difficult. Much easier, though. I will say, with the neck nest. Talk about though. Talk about that idea of just what I'm talking about. What you mentioned on that podcast, the psoas, the hips, and kind of what you're already what you just spoke about with the herniated disc. All right, let's do something right now. So you're looking at a camera, correct? Yeah. So make a circle and then look at that through. Look at the lens of the camera through that circle for me. Small circle, smaller, 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 smaller. And now bring that back to your eye. All the way back to your eye. Okay, so that you're going back to your right eye, correct? Yes. Okay, put your hands down. Now, are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Do you kick with your right foot or your left foot? Right foot. Do you do anything in an ambidextrous way? You don't like you don't swing lefty or you don't you don't go golf. So you're fully lateralized. I I am I can I taught myself how to hit a baseball with my left hand, but my uh, left handed, but not naturally. Okay, not nat. So that was all okay. Good. So when you sleep, you sleep curled up in a ball. Pretty much, more or are less. You, are, yes. Are you on your side? Yeah, I usually go to my left side. That's where I start. Okay. And when you stand, right? Because I can't see through here. Do you stand straight up or you lean on your toes? Are you do you lean forward? I, I'm I'm standing pretty much upright. I don't I don't I don't lean on my toes too much. All right. Did you have ear infections when you were a kid? All the time. Okay. There you go. Done. Okay. Now, so and uh, was your right ear worse than your left ear? Do you remember? No idea. Okay. Probably my right. I'm guessing. It was. It yeah. was. And then, uh, do you have digestion issues now? Uh, yeah, I just had a test ran and I have a little bit of candida. No, it's related to the ear infections. Also, how old are you? 41. Yeah, you're going to have heart palpitations. If not now, they're going to happen where you're going to start to get some fluttering. Uh, do your arms fall asleep at all? At, like your hands fall asleep at night at all? Just wondering. They, they have in the, they have the back past. in the day when I had uh, some issues like apnea. Yes. And then, you know, not to get too personal, but also your testosterone levels are going to be low. So we're going to have issues in three areas with you. We're going to have issues with the immune system, your digestive system, and then hormonal uh, reproductive system. All of those are going to be suppressed because you're carrying that down the road with what's called parasympathetic inhibition due to an atlas misalignment that you had when you were a kid. So mm -hmm. the vagus nerve is suppressed. When the vagus nerve is suppressed, you're going to decrease proprioception into the brain. You're going to slow the you're going to slow the the spin of the vermis. So when you fall on your when you sleep on your back, you're going to feel like you're either falling back or you're not going to feel protected. So a person like you needs to use pressure on your chest and pressure on your forehead to be able to stimulate the vagus nerve. So you're going to be able to fall asleep on your back and or you're going to want to sleep slightly sitting up. All right. <laughs> Just to kind of give you a lowdown on, on why yeah. why your specific issues you're having on your back. No, yeah, I love buddy. that. And I know, and I know there's that, uh, having been at the bi biohacking conference and talking to some of your people, there's that other product like a crown pillow or something, which I always thought was just like hocus pocus. But there's some, you just mentioned like having that, 
having that um that pillow that pressure on your chest or like a weighted blanket or even you know something on the head can actually be helpful so that's that's interesting i had no idea yeah because of that 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 old those old ear infections when you're a kid that tells me that you're going to have a vagus nerve suppression and the vagus nerve supplies digestion immune system and reproductive right to thrive systems so you want to be able to sti- it stimulate that. So I don't know if you track your sleep or you do anything like that. Um, you're going to want to look at like your HRVs, how quick your core temperature comes down. A lot of times HRV is going to be an issue for somebody like you. Getting into a good deep sleep usually is an issue. Not normally. I'm just kind of giving you an yeah. avatar of that, the ear infection child, um, just to let you know. Okay. Talk about the the back sleeping position okay i want to hear about this sorry i totally ignored your psoas so oh yeah yeah please yeah talk about my as this is out of alignment your head is going to translate forward so so if you look at a spine a spine should have curves where the weight of your head should be over the hips in your case because this misaligned that happened to you you lost this curve in your neck because I can see because you tilt your head over. Mm -hmm. And then, so as you lose this curve in your neck, the body compensates by picking up a psoas muscle spasm in the lower back. So, So when you reinforce that by keep sleeping on your side, you're never going to get rid of that psoas dysfunction because you have to uh, get that neck back so that, that your, your, your gravity brings you back and it releases the tension. Okay, so it by sleeping on my back, can I sl- will that help reverse this psoas issue that I have in your opinion? So not in my opinion based on law. Davis's law states that tissue will remold based on the stresses that are applied. So if you stress the tissue lightly, gently over 8 hour period of time and you do that night in night out or even 1 to 2 hours a night, doesn't have to be the whole night, you eventually will stress that tissue into the mold that you're looking for. Yeah, I'm familiar with Davis, uh, David's law, Davis's law. So, okay, so and and you've seen that in your practice, just having people go from that simple side position that I know a lot of us like to sleep in, and just going into the back position, things start to over time. How how long does it, do you see before you start seeing results in people? Typically, so it's not simply going into the back position because um, you can use a pillow the wrong way by supporting your head. You see, there's all there's also a law in the body that it's kind of I call it Martoni's law. It's a really an unstated law. It's that if you don't use it, you lose it, right? So anything you support in the body, you're going to make that what you're supporting weaker. So let's say I put your knee in a support, you're going to make the knee weaker. The ultimate support's a cast. If you've ever broken a bone and you had your arm in a cast, you take your arm out of a cast, you can barely move the joint. Because the body says if you're not going to use it, you're going to lose it. So if you support the head and you support the neck with all these pillows, but as you support the head, you just make the curve of the neck weaker. You want to use distraction when you sleep, which gently will... So you want to use the weight of the head off of the back of the pillow to gently distract the neck causing the stress that the body will respond to by creating an arch in that neck. So, and that's one of the issues I have with the neck nest is it's not user friendly. It's not easy to use because when you look at a neck nest, most people put a neck nest flat on the bed and then they put their head over and they rest their head on the back of the neck nest. That is not the way a neck nest is intended to be used. A neck nest is intended to be used on an angle. Oh, I did not know that. I know. This is what most people don't know because most people don't watch the videos, but that's fine. (laughs) But it's it goes to your shoulders and then the entire neck nest goes under your neck. So the weight of the head is, in a sense, gently stretching a curve into your neck the entire the entire night. It is such a natural feeling position. Once you get that right, you'll never change. Okay, awesome. I can't wait. I'm doing this tonight. What about people, you know, I know the big problem uh, that I had going to the back was 
was the fact, you know, my, my jaw, the misalignment and just people, you know, typical, um, sleep apnea issues yeah. with the neck nest. Do you see people being able to compensate better using that? Or what's your, what do you see right, overall? Here, here's one of the issues is we've never been taught to breathe correctly. Right. So, and the due to, due to Davis's law or even Wolf's law, tissue will remold based on the stresses applied. When you sleep on your face, if you put a weight on your face, you will cave in your sinuses. And you sleep on your face, you're caving in your sinuses. You're, 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 you know, you're, 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 uh, there, there's these balloons that you can stick up and they, they, you know, they yes. crack your sinuses. Yeah. I had to have that done to be able to breathe better. But it's airway issues. Being able to manage your airway at night is very important and you have to learn how to do it. That's the problem with going from side sleeping to back sleeping. You're not just dealing with all of this, the, the tension and stuff that occurs from changing those positions because when you go to a back sleeping position, you're going to stay in that position three, four times, sometimes 100% longer than you would in a sideline position. So getting used to that and then being able to manage that airway is really important and that's what we teach within our programs and platforms. But you can do a few things. First thing, you can put covers underneath your chin, tucked under there so your chin stays closed. You can learn to suck your tongue to the roof of your mouth and try to keep that, you know, you know, keep your mouth closed. You can also use mouth tape. You can use an eye mask instead of one just over your eyes, one keeping your jaw shut. So there are multiple ways to be able to manage your airway as you're getting used to it. Dr. Martoni, what about, uh, I'm just thinking about the, um, you know, I always think about the Paleolithic era or just like our ancestors and how they slept. Is there any science or any background history of like, oh, back in the day they were side sleepers or they were, I don't know, ancient Ayurveda says sleep on your left side because of, uh, you know, it's better for your digestion and your liver. I don't know what they say about back sleeping. Do you, I have no idea. You would know more than me. Yeah. So when they say they, I love they, the term they. Right, where they come from. So so there's a study out there, you know, that's done on glymphatic drainage and it's done better on your left side. And I'm gonna tell you, if you have reflux, like let's say I have peanuts late, one of the only things, you know, I'll get reflux maybe once or twice a year, I'll go on to my side because yeah, you are correct. You're going to not have as much uh, acidic issues. Or I sleep sitting up. I use an elevated bed. I usually sleep at five to eight degrees and I change the angle, um, you know, so my psoas doesn't get used to it. But, you know, there are different things that you can do um, to accommodate that. Now, when you go and you look at the different eras, like with, pillows were only really invented, you know, thousands of years ago. Before that, they never slept on pillows. And then as they, the early pillows were blocks of wood under people's necks, like in that movie, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, they go under the neck and they slept on their backs. And then you have other people when they got the furs, right? The big, big, thick furs, because one of the issues with tossing and turning is well, actually two reasons is you will toss and turn because your core temperature is too hot or you're too cold. Your body doesn't feel safe. That's why we curl up in a ball to feel protected or the body is in pain. Pain's the number one reason why you'll toss and turn. So the body's in pain. You can only fall asleep on your side for so long. You put yourself on thick, thick, thick blankets or, you know, one of these new beds that has like that much foam in it. You're going to sink into that. But then you're going to end up with so much distorted neck pain that, you know, because you're destroying the structure of your spine, you can't maintain healthy alignment on your side. So I tell people to do the... um the the movie test try to watch a two-hour movie in the position that you fall asleep in and tell me how long you make it Great not possible yeah talk dr martoni talk a little bit about we we kind of glazed over because we just jumped right into things but talk about just how you design this thing 
and just maybe some of the science and, and you kind of talked about it when you when you were laying down and kind of demoing it but just talk about how you kind of came up with this design and and why it works and why you're seeing so many results and why so many people are using it now and, and getting results okay yeah so all right so i came up with this based on a lot of pain i had a lot of pain trying to develop different pillows right and that's why we called it the neck nest is it's really not a pillow for your head it's a pillow for your neck and you'll notice that the the roll is towards the front i originally designed it to put your head over the the roll and rest back there and it's good for a certain period of time but i i use so many different fills that as the fill breaks in you, you you're going to notice that it compresses down so what we ended up doing is we uh, early on is we found that instead of redesigning it because i wanted to use that down fill because it's the most forgiving we've tried so many different fills and we're in current designs with different fills also but for the, right now the angle the of the of the neck nest up getting under the base of the neck it, it creates a perfect alignment of you want your head about an inch to an inch and a half off of the bed as as down compresses it gently distracts so it actually pulls the neck slightly into distraction and then the weight of the head hangs off of the back of it so that's why i mean it I tried so many different designs to get that because I what I did is I would put people on their backs, I'd take an x-ray of their neck, then I would take an x-ray of their neck on the neck nest so I could get the I could get the angling precisely what I wanted to be able to maintain a healthy cervical spine. That's amazing. What uh, what other um you know I know you know, obviously, you know a lot about sleep, and I know there's more than just the neck nest. What other products and what other things do you have for people if they're they're coming and they're looking to to get it? Well, one of the things that I think is really important is pressure over your eyes, especially to create that safety. So we we sell um, do I have them here? No, but we sell you know just inexpensive eye masks because and they're smaller, right? Because I want that pressure against your eyes. Just by using pressure against your eyes, there's something that's called HRV, heart rate variability. It's a really a determination of if you're sympathetic dominant or parasympathetic dominant or, or your body is in survival state or it's in thriving state, right? And you want to balance. When you it, uh, awake, you want to be in survival. When you're sleeping, you want to be in thrive. So you, that's where your body wants to recharge. Because we're always in our own minds and we can't shut our brains off, we want to use pressure on our eyes because that stimulates the parasympathetics. And then another product that we have is something they call Deep Sleep. We're out of it currently right now, but it's back in stock in a few weeks. What Deep Sleep is, is, is everybody, people take sleep supplements to make them fall asleep, to help them fall asleep. Well, if you do that and you're taking the melatonins and you're, and you're, and you're, and you're really you know, trying to dive yourself into sleep artificially, what's going to happen is you're not going to go through those natural patterns and you're going to get rev rebound at the, at the end and you're not going to be able to get good deep sleep. So we created a product called Deep Sleep. It's not a melatonin supplement. It has, yes, L-arginine. It's got GABA. It's got products that help calm the brain down, relax the system so the body will naturally... Uh, get tired and you'll naturally get into a sleep state, but it has that L-arginine that opens up your blood vessels. So when your hands and your feet are outside of the covers, your hands and feet will act as radiators and your core temperature will cool. That is really one of the critical components to being able to get good deep sleep at the beginning of your sleep cycle is you want your body to cool quickly. So deep sleep is designed to do that. So we have sleep supplement, we have we have the pillow, we have the, the, the eye mask, and then we also have, you know, programs at Dr. Sleepright to be able to help people understand about sleep because a product's just a product. I'm a why guy. Like, if the why's big enough, the what doesn't matter. It took me a lot over these years to become a back sleeper, and, and I'm so happy I am now because my entire life has shifted and transformed because of it. 
Yeah. On that note, any, are there any testimonials or does anything stand out to you that, man, someone came to you, you know, for you, for example, you had a herniated disc. I mean, that's a pretty good one, but uh, other people too, where maybe they were just in debilitating pain and all they did was just start using the neck nest, sleeping on their back and their pain went away. Oh yeah. We have, um, we have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of testimonials, right? But really some of the ones that stand out are, it, it, I like, you know, I like the vagus nerve stuff because I know as you improve the arch in the neck. So think about this. When you lose this curve, you're affecting the neuro neurology of your vagus nerve, throwing your entire body out of balance. Anybody with allergies, immune system dysfunction, digestion issues, low testosterone issues, I'm going to almost guarantee you they have a flat cervical curve. Mm. So when you lie on your back and you put a pillow underneath your neck, <laughs> oh, not that you want to do that, and over a period of time you gain this, you're going to stimulate health. Or, or if you've had health challenges and you've tried everything, I've tried diets, I've, I have SIBO, I, I went gluten-free and that didn't help. You're going to notice that this is the hidden cause that has never been addressed. And once you start addressing the cervical curve in your neck to improve function of the of the curve, your entire body is going to get healthier because of it. Yeah, it makes sense. If the body is in uh, parasympathetic dominance or is, is in a state of fight or flight, you can't heal. You can't get better. So it makes complete sense. Mm. Dr. Motoni, what, uh, any other exciting projects that you're working on right now? Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, absolutely. So, uh, I'm, uh, I'm big on, on brain health, right. In, in ADD, because I have a brain that loves to internalize. I love to internalize, uh, stuff. I'm a thinker, internalized thinker. If things slow down for me, I get anxious, right? If there's not a lot going on or, you know, you have unexplained underachievement, you know, you're capable of more and you're always going. It's tough for you to live in gratitude because you're always going, going, going. Well, that's a state and that's a state that is going to get worse because you think about your brain like this. Think about your brain as a top. The faster the top goes, the more focused it is. The slower the top goes, the more all over the place or wobbly it is. Right. So if we can do things to speed up the brain. We're going to be able to keep you focused and keep you more productive and less anxious. Well, I can. I, I have two things. So I've come. In, I've come up with a neurostructural protocol where I'm teaching health professionals, whether you are a a, a chiropractor, whether you're a, an a osteopath, you're a tr fitness trainer, you're a massage therapist. I'm creating a network of interdisciplinary people certified in what's called the neurostructural protocol. I'm teaching you how to look at people. Tell them what's wrong with them by, remember, listening what they say, but treating what you see, opening up a lens where everybody across different disciplinaries use the same lens, but you treat your own way. So then we open up a cross line of communication, and then we focus on three things. We focus on sleeping position. We focus on your treatment on how you're going to treat the neurology. And then we work on balance. So I'm developing now a specific wobble board to help people spin their brain by working on their balance. And once we put all three of these things together, boom, baby, we're out there in uh, February. We're starting the uh, program. That's exciting. Talk, talk a little bit um, about balance because um, I've done a lot of training with the vestibular system and balance. And I know, you know, even I have two young boys, nine and six, and um, there I saw some balance issues and vestibular issues with them. And, uh, you know, that could be you could see causes with um brain development add it might some of these symptoms might manifest people just think oh well, it's just a balance system but it does so much more than that and i know people who their balance system improved and you know this guess what their sleep got better allergies went away so talk about uh i'm curious to kind of see what you're doing with the vestibular system and balance that that's going to be really interesting so one of the issues the reason why i was asking those questions at the beginning your body I know how we say it. most people feel confident when you see an old in the older individual, they're going to be flexed in this forward plane. Okay, they're going to be leaning forward, they're going to be walking hunched over, 
But that's a process to be able to get there. If you want to see if somebody has imbalance or a child's a toe walker and they're walking on their toes, that is a, a brain that's weak, that's, that's too constricted in the forward plane, but they're weak in the posterior plane. Mm -hmm. Now, you need to challenge that because if they fall asleep, you're going to see a lot of people say, oh, I feel like I'm falling backwards when I, when I fall asleep. I feel like I'm falling off of a cliff. That's because the brain development is not there because they're, con they're in this constricted plane. So the only way to challenge that is, is either you have to challenge your balance at a very specific level, like on a wobble board, you know, like a, like a wobble board that is really hard. I'm not talking about like one of the Amazon ones that you get. I'm talking more like a, a go fit one. And a go fit one, if you put that on a hard surface, 99% of the people out there on this planet aren't going to be able to use it. So that is where you start. You start by using a wobble board. Then you can walk up to like a slack line. You know, I use, I, I do it on my mountain bike. I just put my brakes on and I just sit there now. I don't even have to put my feet on the ground because it, brain development is so important for me to be able to work on my balance because that stimulates and develops a specific portion in your brain called your vermis. And your vermis develops through proprioceptive signals, which is balance signals. 80% of all those signals are in the cervical spine. So as you sleep and you lose that curve in your neck, you're atrophying the vermis. One of the issues of the vermis is to build the prefrontal cortex. So if you atrophy your balance or you're sitting down, you're going to feel more anxious and you're feeling more anxious because your neurology is slowing down because your brain is atrophying because you're not moving. Yeah, but that's that's how that works. <laughs> wow, that's that's you get me going, and I, yeah. I, I'm talking like these these things, but that's that's how it works. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited to um, see what happens in February. That's going to be really really cool. And um, I mean, I just I know a lot of people that pay for sleep coaches. You know, that's all the rage right now because people understand, high performers understand that if they can just augment some of that area of their life, they are going to get so much more productivity, maybe more patience, their business will explode, et cetera, et cetera. And it seems like you're, you are building a really found a really critical program. Like anybody like myself as a holistic health coach or anybody wants to add on kind of that, that, um, that depth to sleep in a really holistic way, I think that's going to be really powerful. So that's really neat. Yeah. So it's a depth to the neuro how to read the neurology, which then makes why sleep is so important. So the, when I entered the when I entered the industry, I didn't enter the sleep industry because I wanted to help people sleep. See, I entered the sleep industry because I wanted to correct their structure while they slept. So it's very, so I'm in the industry very, in a very, very different way. And the reason I'm in the industry, because I how I look at people and what I can see. I'm teaching people how to see through the same lens I use. I'm teaching them the sleep protocol. But then let's say you're a trainer and we're going to have different levels. We're going to have pro level, then mastery. When you become a master, you will then train people within your profession the protocol that we use within the training for program. Within somebody uses within osteopaths somebody uses within chiropractic so we'll have these different offshoots there's a neurostructural protocol which is how we all see people and then how you treat people is within your own expertise yeah very very neat i want to uh wrap things up and kind of ask you some final round questions that i like to ask all my guests but before i do just anything that i that i didn't ask you that you wish i had um no, just, uh, you know, I think really one of the game changes is not to look at just sleep from the, you know, rest and recharge and repair aspect, but you've got to look at it as the restructure and realign. That is the leg of the stool that we don't understand in our culture. And when you listen to me, whether you vibe with it or you think you can't sleep on your back, that's fine. Don't do it. But at least spend one hour a day or one hour a night getting that neck into extension, being able to stretch some sort of curve into your neck. Do it one hour a day. I just think the most convenient time is to do it when you're sleeping because that one hour when you're sleeping may turn into two hours. But that is really, we need to be so protective 
of our cervical curve because that is really the hidden cause of, of, of loss of health in our culture. You know, on that note, Dr. Martoni, when, when like someone like me, who's going to start doing the neck nest again and starting back up on it, how do you recommend, do you just do it for one hour a night, Joel, do it for two hours, just kind of build your way in. Is that what you would suggest for anyone who has difficulty Absolutely. doing the baby back steps. protocol? Yeah. I'm about Bob, baby steps. What about Bob? You know, <laughs> baby steps. Got it. Love it. Um, all right, man, I want to ask you some final round of questions and then we'll wrap it up and uh, let everybody know where they can find you, connect with you and learn more about uh, neck sure. and all the exciting things you're doing. Um, I'm curious what, uh, a high performer like yourself, just any, were, was there a choice or any choices that you made in your life that you think made you who you are today? Um, yeah, just trying to meditation, just trying to figure out like, I had a couple being being a high performer, you're a high thinker, right? There are going to be breakdowns. I don't care how high you are, you're going to be low. <laughs> you know, what I mean? there's going to be things and I hit a low of a low one point, you know, I was actually drinking alcohol heavy at the time, my best friend had just died right in front of me. And, uh, and, um, and then I blew up in a way that I just melted down, had no idea that it was inside of me, started diving into my own brain, how it worked, realized it was subconscious programs that were running in my background that were determining the way that I, the way that I, they were controlling how I respond and how I react. And if they're not identified, you just you, you're not you're not in total control. Your subconscious brain is driving everything, which it always is. So getting to the subconscious brain and, and really understanding how your past defines your, your 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 present, but it doesn't have to define your future. What you do is you got to change your thinking. And I did that through getting into a practice of meditation. I was able to calm my brain. Once I was able to calm my brain, I started writing, and then that's really what transformed everything. Wow, very neat. A any specific meditation that you like to do the I most? Just, I'm, listen, I'm Italian. I thought meditation was a was a freak thing. Like you, you, say, like, you say that word, you're, you you know, forget it. But uh, no, I I use a, a device called Muse, just a thing I put on my head. I put some headphones on. I listen to the. I try to just relax, get some birds, go in with some intention, come out. It just calms my brain. It just opens up space for being able to think. Yeah, very cool. Um, I'm a big reader. Are there any like top one to three books that just change your life or that you read and you'd recommend you know, other people? I read? like the, the, I mean, I'm a introspective type of thinker. I like the Joe Dispenza breaking the habit of being yourself, you know, you know, just, just identifying, you know, that you're a product of your, of, of, of just old programs yeah, and, and how to break those programs. I like that one. I like, I did like the Zappos deliver, delivering happiness, you know, how, whether you're, you 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 know you know you hear yeah, the adage be the change you want to see in this world but you know you really you you you, you got to live in gratitude you got to live being grateful and when you slow down enough to be grateful big things will come to you so true last couple of questions we'll wrap it up any uh I'm curious what a guy like you a high performer and a and a sleep expert what are some rituals or what are some habits that that you do on a regular basis you mentioned bedtime, gratitude. Same too. time every night. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm in bed. Same time. My bedtime is, you know, um, you know, varies 915 to 930, kind of depending what I'm doing. If I'm preparing for a time change, I'll change that. Then as that's in the winter time, as the summer comes along in in the daylight and the nights get shorter and the daylights get longer, you can change that. But be very conscientious about your bedtime. Right. Because your body likes consistency. Then during the weekend, like we had a big party at my house, obviously, you know, I didn't go to bed at that time. So napping and, and just kind of making that time up, I'll probably nap, you know, this afternoon. And, um, you know, being able to keep a schedule with consistent time. Stop the amount of food. Like if you eat late, you got to stop that. You can only eat a little bit late. You can have a little something before you go to bed, but you don't want to have a full stomach because heat is a byproduct product of digestion. And like I said, in order to get good sleep, you want your core temperature to drop. So eat, so finish eating early, go to the bed at the same time every single night and hands in your feet out of the covers and some sort of pillow over your head to create protection. Hands on your, now, you know what, you mentioned that twice. Last, I want to ask you about that because some people, they say, oh, you can get better sleep if uh, you wear socks, but you're saying, no, keep your, your hands and feet out of the covers. Is that right? 
Yeah, those same, those same people tell you to leave. By the, the way, car. by the way, the, Dr. Martoni, the people that said that, they were the days. They were the days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I know some of the people that recommend that, but yeah. they, uh, it, it, so there's something in the body called allostatic load. The body has a hierarchy of things when it's under stress that it will shut down in lieu and transfer its energy towards. One of those things is body's core temperature. Body core temperature, the body really only cares about the temperature from your waist to the bottom of your neck. You keep that as bundled up as you can. Really, you know, big covers over, over your uh, chest. Arms and your hands and your feet, they can be out. And people are like, oh, my hands get freezing. That's because your core is too cold. So mm -hmm. you can put everything under the covers for the beginning once everything warms up. Then kick your hands and your feet out. Allow this to be warm. And then temperature regulate out your hands and your feet because your body doesn't care about those. So it wants to cool those down to keep the core at a constant temperature. Perfect. Amazing, man. Thank you for explaining that. Man, last but not least, uh, just let everybody know where they can find you, connect with you, and learn more about all the cool things that you're up to. Yeah, they can take a free, you know, see how you're, you're sleeping. They can go to drsleepright.com, D-R-S-L-E-E-P-R-I-G-H-T.com. Take a free sleep risk assessment right to see how your habits are affecting your health and then uh, there you if you go to our products page that's the neck nest you can look into that a little bit or if you click on the programs you can find a little bit more about our programs that certification there right there it says it's coming soon but you can put your name on a list if you're interested in on it and um and then you're um you can secure a spot if you like or if your name's on the list we'll be reaching out to you to make sure it's the right fit for you Bada boom. Dr. Martoni, man, appreciate you, brother. Thanks for being on. Thank you. I really appreciate you and what you're doing, Joel.